What's up, y'all? Snail Almighty, aka the Global Dark Skin Ambassador. Back at you with another Rikers Island story. Um, if you hear any uh, motorish kind of sounds in the background, they right outside my building. They taking care of the grass and stuff like that. You know, we we living in the country. You know, shit like that. But um, this Rikers Island story is another story about underestimating your opponent and minding your business and staying out of people's face or else bad things can happen to you. Okay, now, so I'm going to take you to 2009. I had already been on Rikers Island for about a year. Uh, when you when you're younger than 18 and you're an adolescent on Rikers Island, they require you to go to school, but then when you turn 18, they allow you to sign out, right? So I turned 18 in the box. I came out of the box. I was 18. They had me on the school floor. I signed out. When you sign out, they sent you to 3UPPA. And it may have been one other place, but 3UPPA. So I signed out of school. I'm in 3UPPA. I'm chilling. By this point, I'm kind of like one of those like been there, done that type of dudes. Like um, a lot of the extra politics, a lot of the extra stuff one would need to do when they first enter the island to uh, get a name established or to keep um, oppressors off their back. I got to a point where I didn't really have to do that. Basically, I knew somebody who held some type of weight basically from either having one-on-one -on -one fights with dudes or getting jumped by dudes in other houses and and uh um they respected my heart and they told me that if they ever um in another house and I come in there that that they got me they'll vouch me stuff like that I basically got to a point like that where it was basically like a smooth sail. Anybody who was in Rikers Island and you've been in Rikers Island for eight months and older, you'll realize that you'll get to a point where people know you. Even if you're not the most vicious person, but if you have known to put a certain, at least a minimal level of pain in, there's gonna be people that know you from every single house, being that either you was in the house with them before, you ran into them in court, or law, law library, you know, little different stuff like that, training, little different stuff like that. But um, I'm in three upper. This particular house is ran by Bloods, but they have they have a Crip who's on the team, highly respectable Crip. And then there's another Crip who wasn't on the team. Um, he was borderline day room dummy, but the fact that his mans, who was the big homie that they set was there, he vouched for him. And this little borderline day room dummy Crip, he acted extra tough because his big homie had a, a high ranking inside the house. Um, this led to problems in the future. Now. Me being in 3 Upper for some time, I already seen the politics of the situation, the dynamics of the situation. There's always going to be little cliques, no matter who who is who in any house. There's going to be people who deal with people um, more than they deal with other people. There's going to be people who tolerate other people based off of the fact that it's someone else with a high level of power who they don't want to offend. You know, it's basically like the mafia, it's like, you may have a problem with somebody, but you basically would have to vote on it if you want to get something done, or you would have to allow something unfortunate to happen to the person that's standing in your way, and then once that happens, you can go you can go above them or below them and then deal with the person you have an issue with. But anyways, with that being said, I noticed how the extra borderline day room dummy crip dude, um, he really, really, really was acting extra tough because his big homie was there, 
right? So there was two Pathias. Oh, uh, one of the Pathias was one of the top dudes in the house, one of the top dogs. And then there was another Pathia, which was basically like the little homie, the little homie of the big Pathia dude, right? So mind you, by this point, I have no beef with Pathias because I had already squashed the situation with the other dude. And by this time, these other Pathia dudes, they didn't even know about that situation. But um, I noticed how there was a little bit of static between the Crip dudes and the two Pathia dudes over nonsense. Stuff like stuff like seating arrangements. And I think I think there was some kind of spades game where somebody bet somebody something and and whoever was supposed to win something, they didn't get it. So it was a lot of tension. But it was tension and then the big homie Pathia ends up going to the box anyway, because, you know, it's, it's Rikers Island. Dudes are always randomly going to the box, you know, like this is nothing out of the ordinary. But then that left the the younger, smaller Pathia alone, the only Pathia in this house where it was already fake tensions between him and these Crip dudes. Now, I watched for days as the two crypt dudes picked on this Pathia dude. And um, my experience from Pathia's, I'm saying to myself, they don't fight much. So <laughs> if a Pathia gets mad at you, you probably gonna have to deal with somebody that's gonna come at you with a weapon. But this is Riga's Island. These dudes should already know that. But I watched them for days. They picking on this dude. Um, not blatantly picking on him, but they're gradually raising the level of blatantly picking on him. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like stuff like when the cereal come in, they forgetting to give the man his cereal. Stuff like he on the phone, they acting like he need to rush off the phone for them. Um, little funny like black people making fun of Spanish people and him, you know, making fun of black people back. Little subtle stuff, little what I would say passive aggressive stuff. Cause me personally, I hate tension. I hate thick tension in the air. Like, like I'm a person where if I feel like it's tension, either I'ma confront you about it and ask if you got something on your mind or I'm just going to skip that level and I'm going to do something bad to you. But um, I watched the tension for a long time. So it comes to a time where it's a regular day. Um, everybody's in the day room. We all watch the TV. There's a show called 12 Caught Our Souls. I don't know if it's still on, but it was this dating show, strictly Spanish, no English speaking, but it's just some of the finest Spanish women doing all these little challenges and stuff. We used to love watching that shit, even though none of us knew what they were saying except for the Spanish people in the house. But I remember watching that show, seeing the phone slot was open. I walked to use the phone. But as I'm walking out the day room to go use the phone, I see the two crip dudes, they fussing with the pot the I do it again. And I hear them, I'm hearing them say stuff like, yo, I'm not gonna keep telling y'all to leave me alone. Like, seriously? Like, he's saying stuff like that. He's saying stuff like, like, I don't know why. It's like, yo, why y'all always got something to say to me? It's like, like, basically, you know what I'm saying? It sounds like he basically trying to tell them that he's about to violate them, but he trying to give them enough rope to hang themselves. But you know, you know, black dudes, we like to joke a lot. Like, we're joking. We some joking ass dudes. And especially if you're on Rikers Island and you got your man with you and you feel like you want to stunt because you'll smoke anybody, y'all will jump anybody, you know what I'm saying? You're going to act how you going to act. And I'm I'm assuming that that's why they was acting like they was acting because because it's two of them, one of him, he act up, they going to jump him, pack him up. But on this particular day, while I'm on the phone, I'm on the phone, 
I hear laughing, joking, joking, joking. They trying to cut ass on this dude. And then I hear they basically trying to taunt him. Like, what? What, you want to fight? You get smoked out of here. You want to get packed up? Right? And then a couple seconds later, being that I stopped paying attention to the conversation because I'm not assuming anything else is going to happen. I see two people yell out, yo, chill, yo, chill, yo, chill. Right? So while they're yelling out, yo, chill, I see the CO. I see the CO because usually the COs are right by the day room, not inside the day room, but they usually be sitting either in that little booth thing outside the day room or they sitting in the chair right by the day room. I see the CO. She like, stop, stop, stop. Put that away. And then she jumps out the way. And then the two crypt dudes, they run out the day room. They run past me. They run down the corridor towards the end of the um, corridor. The corridor, yeah. They run towards the end of the corridor inside the house, of course. And then I just see, I just see the Pathia dude chasing after these dudes. First off, the big homie was way faster than the other dude. But I see the party I do chasing after these two dudes. They running like slaves, like slave feet going. Light feet, light the light. They going. The party I do is coming up from behind the, the, the borderline day room crypt dude. And he's wielding some, like a sharp green. I can clearly see his piece of a radiator. What nobody knew is, before the, the big homie party I do had left, he had given his friend a weapon, a little sharp piece of a radiator. And as I'm watching him chase behind the borderline damn dummy dude, you know how when you running, your elbow will be out like that maybe. I seen him swing, boom. He poked the crypt dude in the elbow, right? Poke crypt dude in the elbow. He chased him all the way to the end. It's like, there's no way to go. You're at the end of the corridor. And he basically was like faking him out because he already had poked one of them. He faking him out. He's like, what now, pussy, pussy, pussy. By this point, this is a female CO, so she's terrified. So she presses the PBA button. The A team immediately comes. Um, they regulate the situation before it can get any worse. And, um, the pot y'all dude, of course, went to the box, caught a charge for a weapon. And you know what I'm saying? Um, the one crypt dude that got stabbed in his elbow, he went to the infirmary. They packed him up, sent him somewhere else. And then the other crypt dude, the big homie dude who was there too, they packed him up and sent him somewhere else. Um, moral of the story is, once again, do not judge a book by its cover.